Contempt warning. Most of this video is about transmisogynist garbage that I can barely contain my rage at. I don't know if I talk very sensitively in this video, and I don't know how you're gonna feel if you watch it, because it might donk up your whole day. Proceed with extreme caution. Hello, it's me, Matthew. Or is it? More on that later. I have been called many things in my life. A doofus, a layabout, a bear, a cuck, a chad, a goofus, a gallant, and everything in between. But perhaps more so than any other, the label that has been attached to me has been a man. Which makes me quite afraid, because those dang leftists are up to their old tricks again and they're teaming up with the feminists and they're waging a war on men, you know. Those Dastardly woke lords are out there every day calling men toxic. They've been doing it for decades now, and at no point in that time have I looked into what they mean when they say it. I mean, there are full-blown groups of people who actually believe that masculinity in itself is synonymous with, like, violence and war. Blech. Last year, the American Psychological Association released guidelines for psychological practice with boys and men that trash traditional masculinity as leading to, quote, aggression and violence as a means to resolve interpersonal conflict. <laughs> Some people think that being a man is all about violence? That's disgusting. There should be a different, more positive view of masculinity. To associate masculinity with violence is, frankly, toxic. It's a toxic for... Uh, um, Men are being feminized. The characteristics which make them men are being taken away. Depending on who you ask, the feminization of men is either harmful, weakening our society, or suppressing innate biological tendencies. Or it's successfully uncovering and rooting out toxic traits in men and manhood. It's either a significant negative problem or a welcome byproduct of blurring gender roles and stereotypes. Strong, aggressive competitors are demonized for their alleged toxicity. So men who are heterosexual, strong, aggressive competitors are no longer an acceptable part of society. Not really. They're the problem. That's men, strong, aggressive competitors, as opposed to women who are weak and passive and do not compete. Which is why men get all the coolest jobs and make more money, because they're more competitive. I've said that there are biological differences between men and women that express themselves in temperament and, and in occupational choice, and that any attempt to enforce equality of outcome is unwarranted and ill-advised as a consequence. Now, now, look, I. Sure, there was some mild, light oppression of women in the past. They were a little bit forced to be domestic slaves. Nowadays, though, just being a man is unacceptable. They've literally, literally made manhood illegal. I believe that there's a danger in our society at the moment of making the assumption that our culture, for example, is a tyrannical patriarchy, which it is in some small part, and that any active um, engagement on the part of young men in particular is indistinguishable from an unacceptable power and dominance drive, which I don't believe. So, as we've learned, whatever it means to be a man is being destroyed forever, obviously. But what is that? Wikipedia defines a man as an adult male human. That's so like a guy or a dude. Not terribly helpful. Dracula defines a man as a miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? <laughs> Frankly, both of these definitions are lacking. And in the latter case, I would actually say that the words are as empty as Dracula's soul and mankind ill needs a savior such as him. There are two schools of thought with regards to what it means to be a man. Some people believe that manhood is a purely biological term. For simplicity's sake, I will call this group bozos. According to bozos, there is no distinction between gender identity and biological sex. They are synonymous and also, and this part is important, unalterable. They believe that by reading a person's genitalia, you can determine their future personality, a form of scrying based on dicks and balls and vaginas rather than tea leaves or chicken bones. Bozos also tend to believe that biological sex is binary. There are men, and there are women, and there's nothing in between. 
which means they tend to dismiss intersex people out of hand, to imply intersex people are either statistically irrelevant or lean enough in one of the two binary directions that they can be comfortably sorted into one of the two neat little categories bozos are comfortable with. Both of these assumptions are unfounded, and lead to horrible problems for intersex people, such as involuntary corrective surgeries. Furthermore, this often puts intersex people in the uncomfortable position of being used as rhetorical weapons in the fight between bozos and less shitty people, while their specific concerns and needs are left unaddressed and unconsidered. I myself have fallen into this lazy way of thinking in the past. The other school of thought, which I will call everyone cool for simplicity's sake, views manhood as a collection of signifiers. Everyone Cool believes that gender is a culturally defined collection of traits that is mutable and flexible. Irrespective of whatever shit goes down with your body chemistry or skull shape or whatever, that you have an internal view of yourself that may align with any, or indeed none, of the ways in which gender is expressed in your culture. And just as people should be free to get whatever haircut they want, or wear whatever clothes they want, or do whatever job they want, they should be free to express their gender in whatever way they find personally fulfilling. I'm, th this is not particularly groundbreaking analysis. You, you know this shit. Okay, now, here's where it gets confusing. Bozos, who believe that gender is immutable and unchangeable, also tend to believe that allowing people to express their gender identity or recognizing them as the identity they prefer is somehow an attempt to destroy or vilify one of the two immutable and unchangeable ways that it is possible to be a person. So, for example, to call someone they believe is biologically female, he or Mr. is incorrect. Which, I mean, why? The words he and Mr. aren't like etched into that person's bones, it's not biological. Should make no difference. If indeed this were a complaint about biology. The only way it could make a difference is if the way that we express gender is culturally defined. That is the only situation in which an attempt by any culture to change the way that men behave would make any sense whatsoever, and in any other circumstance it would not only be a failure, but a ridiculous impossible task like trying to make hot into cold. If men are biologically men, and that biology is immutable, how could men be feminized? What would that even mean? Surely if men are doing something, it is by definition masculine in this worldview. Masculine means manlike, and if you are immutably and ineffably male, and you're doing it, it's a male-like thing to do. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because in order to make the argument that men are being feminized or that masculinity is under attack, you must therefore concede that what it means to be a man can change. If it can't, then how could men be feminized? And if those signifiers can change, and aren't just some immutable, unchangeable facet of one's biology, it stands to reason that some people who are labeled men may not be comfortable with the assumed signifiers you are attaching to them. And what's more, the people on the bozo side of the argument tend to be conservatoids, by and large. Not always, sadly. We have our fair share of bozos on the left, but, you know, mostly. And a conservative's whole thing, like the thing they like, is supposed to be that they want people to have individual freedoms. To allow people to do whatever they want, free of state or societal control. No one can impose their will upon you. But on this issue, they tend to wave that away and argue that it's better for society if traditional, and therefore natural, gender roles are protected. Protected here means meaning enforced. That strikes me as the type of collectivism they despise among leftists, except, you know, premised on hateful nonsense instead of a desire to help people. To allow any sort of non-compliance with the system of gender they have decided is the only acceptable one is to deliberately destroy their version of gender, because for it to exist, it has to be the only one. It's important to keep in mind that they're not advocating simply for people being allowed to conform to traditional gender roles if they want to, something nobody disputes, but rather that allowing any alternative in and of itself is an act of aggression against their social order. To request tolerance is to be intolerant of their need to be intolerant. That's why they think it's okay to think of you as a gender you don't identify with, but it's not okay for you to think of them as a bigot because of it. Because that's an attempt to silence them. Now, jokes aside, 
neither the people that I have labeled bozos, or conservatives in general, I suppose, are dummies, necessarily. This contradiction has occurred to them, and they have found a way to resolve the cognitive dissonance. You see, they're the underdogs. The, the trans, trans lobby, lobby are the overdogs. They've won the culture war, and now their goal is to eliminate traditional expressions of gender forever and force everyone to switch genders for some reason. Men will become women, women will become men, drag queens will begin to wear cargo shorts, and somehow all of this really fucks up video games in particular. Why, if they don't fight off these ideologues, their way of life will disappear forever! Can you imagine what that would be like for them, forced to comply with gendered expectations that make them feel uncomfortable? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how scary that must be? For them? I was watching The Servants the other day, and they had a video about two of my favorite fucking guys, Sargon of Akkad and Jeremy the Quartering Hamblow, claiming that a popular YouTuber who came out as trans did so for validation. And I'm not going to say who they're talking about because she watches my videos and I don't want her to have to deal with the emotional, it's just, I don't want to fuck up her day. You know, it's, it's very obvious he was comfortable in his gender. He looked comfortable in his gender. And then something, you know, so he starts getting popular on Twitter. And then in 2020, he changed his mind. And now he's come out as trans. And you yeah. see the tweet with like 260,000 likes. And oh boy. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. On a certain level, what they're saying makes a little bit of sense. If you ignore most of the world. I'm in a very similar position to the person they're talking about. A lot of my audience is trans or otherwise gender non-conforming because, you know, I treat them like human beings and that is unfortunately a rare quality, so they like to watch my videos. But I'm in a little bit of a different position too because I'm not a closeted trans woman, I'm an out gender fluid sack of potatoes. And I do receive a lot of validation when I express gender feelings or present more femininely than I typically do. On social media, not in real life, where doing so actually makes things a lot more dangerous and fraught with interminable bullshit. It ups my odds of being murdered significantly, which, I mean, you know, they weren't that high to begin with, but still, I try to keep them very low. It puts a target on my back from hate groups, but I mean, also, that one doesn't really apply to me either because I go out of my way to do that anyway, that's part of my job. It would mean potentially losing contact with some friends or family members. It would mean forever dealing with the fallout of knowing that some people would rather lose me than accept me for the person that I feel that I am. It harms job prospects and housing prospects. Not to mention, it's humiliating to stumble my way through a gender presentation that I haven't been conditioned to wear gracefully since childhood. To have to learn to dress appropriately, groom myself appropriately, and carry myself appropriately, knowing that I am judged and ridiculed for it. Knowing that if I fail to live up to other people's standards, they'll claim I'm pretending. And if I go too far past their standards, they'll accuse me of enforcing stereotypes. And that's not even getting into what life is like for people who want to transition in ways that have been medicalized. All the barriers, red tape, and institutional neglect that come along with wanting to change the way your body looks and feels. The probing impositions of doctors who think they know whether your feelings are legitimate or not better than you do. Not to mention, also, there's a terrifying rise in anti-trans legislation in the United States and the UK and plenty of other places. And the ways that trans people have been criminalized and demonized for as long as I can remember. The ever-present trans panic that convinces outsiders that all trans people are predators in waiting. That their inclusion in your space paves the way for other degeneracies and sexual immoralities. Oh, also, the psychological baggage of being told you're one thing your entire life and that that thing comes with a set of assumptions about your personality and behavior that if you fail to live up to, you are a bad person and a failure. Everything from whether or not you're allowed to cry, to what books are acceptable to read, to what colors it's okay to find visually pleasing. Every authority figure you've ever known, from your school teachers, to your religious leaders, to your parents, to your boss, to every single media personality you've ever seen, telling you that if you fail to act in accordance with the standards that have been selected for you, you are to be mocked and scorned and removed from polite society until your behavior is corrected. But on the other hand, you, 
you have the potential to get more likes on Instagram, so it's hard to say whether there's more pressure one way or the other. Couldn't tell you. Trans people famously have an easy time on social media where they are universally treated with respect and admiration. And as an influencer, my career would skyrocket. Why, just look at how Jim Stephanie Sterling has exploded in popularity ever since they came out. Truly, it is a cheat code for success. And I need to push back against the sub losses here, not because it explicitly matters on its own, but because it puts pay to the ridiculous idea that people transition for the sake of their careers, because Jesus fucking Christ, do you know what a ridiculously stupid career move that would be for me? But of course, those who have never met a trans person or care to learn a single thing about what they face love to suggest it's really easy to come out and then let the so-called internet points roll in because it'll boost your career. Newsflash, you fucking idiots. Trans people are in trouble. And anybody coming out visibly these days is asking to have their career opportunities limited and their experience of prejudice sharply increased. And honestly, this topic makes me quite mad. Because I do yearn to present differently, but there's so much fear and societal pressure wrapped up in that. And these chuckle dicks pretend like the social pressure goes the opposite way, as though being traditionally masculine is demonized, and there isn't an enormous social control apparatus bearing down on us at all times, demanding that we conform to their standards, that we live the way they think is correct, no matter how restricting and arbitrary we find it to be. But I live a sort of double life anyway. Most of the time, I am Matthew normal, boring guy who talks about skateboarding way more than he actually skateboards. But also, I am thought slime, D-list faux leftist celebrity who also, by coincidence, talks about skateboarding way more than he actually does it. My identity is neatly bisected into guy I am in the world and person I choose to be online where I work. And I can be anyone online. I don't have to conform to the same social pressures online that I have to everywhere else. I think I'll be someone else for a while. I'm on a journey. I'm not good at this yet. I'm discovering where the line is for me also. I'm gonna I'm gonna go by the name Mildred, at least for a while. It's a goofy name, but I'm a goofy person, so that suits me. Plus it kinda sounds like mildew, which fits the whole slime thing, you know? Hey, you're probably wondering at this point. Are they going to address the fact they got a big cut on their chin? I forgot. I forgot to mention that I did fall off my skateboard and hit my chin very badly against a bench. So that's what that's about. I don't care what you call me. My pronouns are the same, which are just, you know, whatever pronouns you got lying around. I'm not fancy. And nobody has the right to get mad at other people on my behalf for calling me anything different. I do not care. And I do not require anyone else's acceptance or permission. I think it's clear that there's no war on men. Nobody's making men become more feminine. If anything, some people who are labeled men are being forced not to become more feminine. And as we discover that we alone have autonomy over our bodies and identities, some people are willing to go to war to keep that right from us. To which I think there is only one mature response. Let's rumble, motherfuckers! Who wants a taste? You think you can change my gender identity? Face me in the ring, coward! I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Hello and happy Pride Month from the Eyeball Zone. Here in the Eyeball Zone, time works differently, and this bit wasn't written for a video to get posted last week, it, it's merely that time moves dif differently in the eyeball zone than in, than in your... Here in the eyeball zone, we have followed suit from several other evil faceless entities and stolen the language of pride to convince you of our benevolence. But we don't fucking make it hard for queer people to get loans and then slap a rainbow on our logo for a month and act like we're heroes for it. Ugh. Gross. Longtime members of the Goo Crew might have noticed I have a fondness for psychedelic drugs. But uh-oh, that space is getting filled up by all sorts of hateful goobers. 
Even channels that I used to like platformed some real, actual turd guys. Interbeing Art does a better job of gently calling people into the conversation than I would ever do, and discussing the ways that the psychedelic community can marginalize some voices and make people feel unwelcome. They also tend to provide an intersectional approach to talking about psychedelics that is sorely lacking in the space. Trust me, if you've ever tried to research psychedelics as I have, you, a lot of the things you find are from guys like Joe Rogan or Jordan Peterson, and that, that shouldn't be that way. Anyway, that's it from the Eyeball Zone. No more Eyeball Zone this week. Uh, that's all of it. So. Um, if you have a small leftist project you'd like to see featured, hello and welcome to the Son of the Eyeball Zone. Sometimes I want to highlight projects that do not fit the purview of the regular Eyeball Zone, and rather than take space from smaller creators, I have created this subspace. Today is my birthday, June 25th. That's the day this video is posted in the Eyeball Zone time zone. How embarrassing for you. You didn't get me anything. That's okay, you can make it up to me. My pal Tristan, who runs the channel Step Back, does not have 100,000 subscribers. And I would like him to, please. Please give Tristan 100,000 subscribers, at least. I know you can do it. It's not fucking charity. Dude's been putting out quality, informative, and fun content for the better part of a decade, and he has done a great deal for me and is a real pal. And also, full disclosure, I do want to win a bet that he made with me and Dimitri of Catech Gaming. But Dimitri, I have betrayed you, for you should also subscribe to Catech Gaming for all sorts of handy tech tips and useful advice for streamers. Subscribe to them both! Step back, Cata Gaming, and also Interbeing Art give me all of their power. Do you have a small leftist project you'd like to see featured on the regular Eyeball Zone? Send me no more than one email. To thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com, the word eyeball is somewhere in the subject line, and pertinent details, such as your pronouns. And perhaps you will find yourself trapped here, in the Eyeball Zone. You probably didn't notice this, but this video was, a, was delayed a week because of tech problems and embarrassment at how bad I... The, keep in mind, the way my makeup looks in this video, the first time I did it, it was too embarrassing to show. And I showed it this time. So you have to imagine how bad it was before that I didn't want to show it. But this time I did. So keep that in mind. The, uh, yeah, so fucking subscribe already. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not in charge of you. I can't tell you what to do. I, I would prefer it if you subscribe to me. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I, it would be nice. No hard feelings either way. <laughs>